So, Tomáš, the importance of little things. Motivator Tomáš Valach. Hello, everyone. My name is Tomáš Valach, and I have prepared a presentation entitled The Importance of Little Things. Why I entitled it, it like this? Well, I will try to explain on the next slide. Quite a long time ago, I found a quote that small details often create the biggest things. This will be the motto of my presentation as well. And from the time I encountered this quote, basically I'm as if trying to um, do everything to the 100%. This helped me with my clients as well. And at the end of my presentation, you will probably understand why. I have prepared uh, some kind of a summary or overview of a vision of how I look for clients, how I worked with them, and also I will present some results and successes at the end. At the beginning there was a vision. When we have some trainings, it was important to define so that I define myself as a motivator, how I will I be looking for clients, what can I offer them, where will I be looking for them, uh, who will I focus on and what are my goals with these people. In the second stage I defined some kind of an average client, what they need, what they do, what age are they, what problems they have, what places they visit. This helped me in the next stages also with searching for clients. I would like to add that children and youth are not a focus group in this project, but this always made more sense to me. If I'm able to help a 15-year-old boy in some kind of um, independence, then I can help him for dozens of years, which really has a, a big meaning for me. So looking for clients. This might seem like a joke, but I come from the IT world and my uh, work tools are Google and Excel. I'm looking for clients through Google. If you know what the browsing of websites through Google works, then you basically know how it all works. And the process or the period of the COVID pandemic, the whole process of the digitization sped this up even further. And uh, many of my clients have some personal blogs, have some fan pages, and I tried to find them using this tool. Then I researched some information about them, and I knew where I'm going. I knew who I am approaching, so I went there directly with uh, the fact that I could help them already in the initial address or could identify some kind of a problem of theirs. Work with clients. Well, I would like I would define my work in four subcategories: hope, personal e example, motivation, and creativity, which is the most important. Within the first approach, it was very important for me to g give these people hope. Often these people reacted to this and we started to work together. Then there was this personal example and the client got some kind of motivation from that, started to work on themselves. And this is also about the creativity of the client but also the motivator that the steps that we um, come up with, they should bring some good things, especially for the client. Results and successes. This is Adamko, one of my clients, the younger, youngest one. And for me personally, as a motivator, he is a huge inspiration, especially because when we started working together and he got some motivation, he found out what sports exist, how he can develop further. He found his goal and that is when he managed to bring the whole family on board. So the boy really has a clear vision and together we, with him we managed to reach many successes. This is also 
about the fact that the sports itself helps the boy um, because he becomes more independent and self-sufficient. Sports is also a form of rehabilitation that he doesn't even know about. Um, so we were trying to find ways how to increase his independence and self-sufficiency and together we created uh, this kind of banner which was very successful because it got to the television as well and after a year, a year after we created it this idea was taken over by many parents of other kids and they use basically the same photographs and the same um, motives, colors, so this is also a huge success for me. Then we were looking for ways how to improve in the domestic environment as well um, his development so that he keeps progressing and I came up with the idea that if there is a civic association and they have rented a room from the municipality whether they wouldn't like to create some kind of a center there where people from the uh, the area could come to do exercise with the therapist because nothing similar was there and the center now is fully functional and it is full in terms of capacity so this is also a huge success for me to conclude i would like to say that one of the first ideas that we had was basically approaching some companies prepare a universal project that we could when necessary use based on this information in the project um, to enable the client with the parents to react to various um, calls for the expression of interest and after a year there was a message from a company and they used this document to react to the call and the boy is currently getting a few hundreds of euros each month for the treatment so I'm really happy about this that this client is progressing very fast has a goal and basically what he's planning is to take part in the next sports camp and that he will become a medalist from the Paralympics so I will conclude that the small details often create the biggest things. I think that if each of us works on the details, on the small things, to the best of his abilities or her abilities, I believe that we will improve as a society. Thank you. That was Tomáš Valach, and uh, my role is to make short, positive interviews, and you were very positive, but now a more demanding question. What's the most difficult part about being a motivator? Well, I think many of us would like to help each and every one but it is not possible always. So this project has some direction we need to follow and very often we want to help others as well. And I really believe that for the future this project will be expanded. So we should, let's say, still also respect the rule of keeping our own time and so on. All right, and what was the most positive Thing apart from the successes you mentioned, what kind of feeling of satisfaction, how did you get it? Yes, of course, when I see the progress, that the client is pro progressing, moving forward, I think this is the best uh, reward we can get for our uh, cooperation. So the time we spent together was not spent um, in vain and I think this is important for the whole society that everybody improves a little bit, doesn't stagnate and uh, they shouldn't be depending, dependent on our social 
um, services, but should, let's say, be able to satisfy the own needs. Okay, next one is Mishka. Michala Balcova is the next motivator, and I will pass the mic to her. Mishka and her client. Good afternoon. My presentation is a bit shorter than the one of Tomasz, and I focused on. I am describing only the cooperation with my client Paulina. Good afternoon. With Paulinka, I am an athlete myself, so I'm trying to motivate my client to do sports and I want to keep them active because sports can bring beauty into their lives. So our common goal with Paulinka is uh, one connected with sports. We haven't been cooperating for a long time, so we only started and our goals are for example, to improve social life through sports. And I am trying to be an example for Paulina to teach her and motivate her in these areas which are described here. So improve her in as regards to communication with her co-players, so she's more open, then also self development self development is very important for each of us and in sports it is very essential so this is how we work together also regarding resilience technical skills that Paulina is self confident confident very often uh, these people are very skilled but are not confident don't believe in themselves so to improve this aspect and then also some new life and sports challenges so there is always something we can improve in and I really believe that I am a motivation for Paulina we have some pictures here and I really believe that also for the other clients I will remain to be a motivation because it is a wonderful feeling when the clients are progressing while we work together and we can see results. I would just like to add that also Mishka is an, an ideal for me in her personal and also in her sports or professional life. She is an idol. Yes, this deserved an applause. So Mishka. Did you have someone like you are now uh, for Paulina? Well, yes, we do uh, have people who spend time with us. Of course, my family took care of me. My family already from since I was a child was trying to motivate me and they never made my life easier. They were trying to push me and uh, to make me as independent as possible and self-sufficient so I could achieve my goals and I am really grateful for this. And Paulinka, is Mishka strict with you as well? As regards to sports, yes, and I need to respect it and I'm trying to respect that she is strict with me. Oh, really nice words. The same question to Mishka. What would you say? What was the most difficult part of this job? Well, I think overall working with people is not easy. Every client is an individual. We have to find a way to work together and to start our relationship and base it on trust. And once there is trust, it works out naturally. How long have you been working together, Paulina? For three months. And ha did you already find the direction or the way to cooperate or to wo work together? As regards to sports, in some aspects I'm still looking for my 
way. I'm looking, trying to find my way uh, regarding sports. But in this social relationship, uh, you have become friends? Yes, yes, we are friends. One big applause to Paulina and Mishka. Mikey, this is not for you. Next presentation. I will give the mics to the next one. Next one is Martin. Who is it? Here you go. So we have three mics here. One is also for Mikey the dog. All right, let's switch to the presentation. Martin Dite is the next one. Good afternoon. I prepared a presentation about the work with one specific client of mine, as most of my clients are like a short time after their accident or injury. And this work is really complex and time consuming. That's why I invited my first client. We have still been cooperating or working together on our common goals. These go and then there are always new and new goals coming up with Yurai. We met uh, when he was still healthy, let's say, or he could walk. So we became friends back then. And then he addressed me after, after his accident, when he was still in the hospital. He called me and told me what happened and that he would need assistance with so many things as he was he didn't know what does it mean to have this disability to be in a wheelchair. So you can show some pictures. So firstly, we tried to stabilize Yurai from the medical condition or medical point of view. And then we started the process of rehabilitation. We worked with physiotherapist first in Slovakia and then look for other options also either in Austria or in Hungary, also in other countries. And Juraj has rehabilitations regularly also abroad, but also in uh, facilities in Slovakia. So next picture. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jura. Uh, Jura, I had an accident two years ago on a scooter or on a four-wheel car, and you can see me now. I think this is the first time I was able to stand up. That was the first motivation of Martin to telling me that I need to stand up every day. And then he recommended me rehabilitation options in Austria. So as he knew them personally, he, he, I got this recommendation from he, him. And I was really grateful because I didn't know what to do. I am married. I have two small kids and I didn't know what will ex be ahead of me, whether my wife will stay with me, whether my children res will respect me, whether I will be able to walk again so they will not have to lift me all the time to get in the car and so on. So I got all the recommendation from Martin. He told me how to get on a car on a BMW, how it all works. So it was really hard times, even though it was a BMW. So he motivated me to buy a car, to adjust it to my needs and to make my life more comfortable so I can drive my kids around to the uh, afternoon activity so I can live basically the same way, same life as before and together we will manage. So I also spend time in Kovacova and exercising, exercising, exercising. He calls me up and asks me like, did you stand up? Did you go to this rehab? Did you go home? What did you do? So I also do rehabilitation in Pezinok, in the city of Pezinok. So even though my legs don't work, I was able to stand up at least a little bit. I, I am able to, let's say, sit in the wheelchair. I'm able to change positions. This is how it looks like when I stood up at home for the first time. 
and it was a really nice feeling. Uh, here it meet Mishko and Bekim, we had a coffee standing up after half a year after the accident. I tr also tried to light my cigarette, but uh, I didn't manage, so they had told me, but I'm really trying hard. At home they made me this kind of a moto mat, this kind of instrument or device. So they motivated me or inspired me also in Kovačova. So they inspired me that I have to be self-sufficient. I have to use it. So this is the first wheelchair you can see. It was with uh, separated like stands for the legs. And then after a year, uh, Martin helped me to choose a more active wheelchair because we could see that I can manage, that I can manage to sit there and to remain there. So I have been using it since then. We go, I use it when I go fishing and there are so many other activities where he helped me with. This is my car. This is the first car I managed to drive or I learned to drive. Then we were looking for a sports activity that could be also attractive for my kids. But I was probably too ambitious. I kept on falling from the wheelchair, so I pushed my forearm and I or shoulder and I need to get a surgery. So I live close to the Danube, to the river Danube. And um, we looked for a canoe. But let's see for the future whether I will be able to, but I don't want to risk too much because our arms and shoulders are also exhausted. Another challenge for me, Martin also helped me with this. I could also train in the city of Trnava. This is para, para trap, para shooting and I think there is still a long path ahead of us. It is not so easy. So I need to get a license. I need to buy the weapon. I need to go training. And then maybe after a long time, I will get a reward for it. But now I am about to try to get all the licenses necessary. So together with Juraj, we had to start from the scratch. Get a wheelchair, get a retirement, um, get a barrier-free apartment, and then a second wheelchair. Then we asked for different allowances and contributions, for like contribution for personal assistant. The pandemic made our job very hard. Also the cooperation with authorities. Authorities just gave us the message that the deadlines, they don't have to respect the deadline. So now it takes five, six months to wait for any kind of uh, decision for, from the authorities. So this is why our why, why it takes so long. The job is so time consuming and we wait for we, we were trying to find some smaller micro goals. We set these goals like I don't know, being able to put the wheelchair in a car, adjusting some small things and so on. So we don't have to keep the time limits here. We can achieve these smaller goals by ourselves. And once we manage to solve the issues, these basic issues, we could continue looking for maybe some free time activities, sport activities. And as Juraj has mentioned, we are now looking at the sport aspect of the whole issue. Juraj would like to return to his occupation or to continue working. We would like to now change the focus. <laughs> well, I don't really feel like working, but I am forced to. So, try. my job is not about 
It's not that I write the application for him and that I am the one who gets the contribution and so on. My job is to motivate him so he does it everything by himself. So once we finish our cooperation, that he will be self-sufficient, that he will be able to apply for some contribution or look for some sponsors. So my goal is to make the client independent and uh, self-sufficient. Martin Diet. thank you very much. You are thanking him for this. And now here's the dog. So something about the dog, perhaps? Well, Mikey is my dog, who is four years old. He's a German Shepherd, he's a therapeutic dog, and he's a great companion. Yes, we can see that. Would you like to say something, Mikey? <laughs> great, thank you very much. Martin, a question to you. What is the most common type of problem in terms of frequency that the clients approach you with? Well, unfortunately, these are problems with allowances by the state, whether we're speaking about compensation allowances or uh, disability pensions. So. But this is something people are entitled to. Well, not all of them. You have to uh, fulfill some criteria. Personal assistance is based on the subjective assessment of uh, the official in the authority. So uh, a disability is not sufficient. You have to have some activities to get as many hours of personal assistance as possible. But you can hack this, right, and, and help. Uh, yes, we do have some tools to make the, the work as efficient as possible, but we still feel that the civil servants basically don't take us as partners, but they take us as opponents, perhaps, and they are not trying to help us or our clients. And especially during the pandemic, for me, this is the thing that was the worst at that time, because that is when they closed Kovacheva, we couldn't go out even, so they um, let me go home and I, w I didn't know what to do, because the, the, office, the government offices were closed, I didn't have time to spend hours uh, over the laptop to search for the information. For example, I, I didn't. I asked the lady in the office whether she knows how to connect a plug into the wall, uh, the socket, and she said she didn't. Well, I'm an electrician. I'm not uh, a civil servant, so I don't have this information that you have. Well, and Martin helped me because he has the experience, he has the knowledge, so he helped me a lot, a lot in this regard as well. Thank you very much. What is the next presentation, friends? We have two more motivators that we haven't heard from yet. Pass the mics, please. So, Juraj Folvarski. There you go. Hello, my name is Juraj Folvarski. I work in the Early Assistance Center in Presho, and besides me there are six more motivators. Most of them are still active athletes or para-athletes. Here you can read about each of them. Our office is located in the wider center of Presho. And the client which whom I invited here today, I met at one of the presentations of companies who deal with the sales of uh, wheelchairs. We met in June, perhaps. In At the beginning of July, I invited him to the center. And this is a prototype of a client f for for this particular project.
he wanted to do some sports. I named some possibilities that we had in the Paralympic Committee. And first, he uh, uh, picked athletics. We visited one of the athletic clubs in Humenna, and there, with a trainer, he tried shot putting, javelin throw, but because of his height, he wasn't very good at it. At that time, in our center, we had Matteo Pag as one of our colleagues, who was an active para ice hockey player. And at one of the meetings, uh, Janko came. He, I contacted them with Martin. They invited him for the first training. And since then, he's an active uh, hockey player. Over the last period of time, he even got the um, representative of the of the Slovak Republic status in the national he's in a part of the national team they didn't take him into china yet because he was training for a short time but hopefully he will be part of the next event and now i will give the floor to yanko hello my name is siano um good afternoon to everyone well briefly yurai has said it already we have met at a presentation of a company which deals with the sales of wheelchairs and other tools. That is when I was finishing my job. I didn't know how to continue. I wanted to uh, have some time off because I was working with European funds. And that's when we decided or talked about trying sports. I tried um, shot putting first and then I st stuck with the ice hockey. Um, Janko wasn't a part of the community of wheelchair users, he lived with healthy people and that is why he is very active as, uh, as our member, he, or he visits the center very often, he gets to meet people. Yes, this was a very big benefit for me. Before that, I thought I didn't have to be part of the, the club or community of wheelchair users, but when I started to visit the center more often, I understood that I can perhaps share my problems with, peop with people of the same experience that healthy people don't have because they have the experience and they can help me with some things or perhaps give me some advi advice. Is that it? I can, well, perhaps Janko can tell us more about his successes on the sled sledges, where he was already. Well, two days ago I got back from Kazakhstan, where we had a, a, a match with the, with Kazakhstan, of a, a match of our national team and they wanted to become part of the C category in the Kazakhstan team, so they invited us to show them some techniques and how to improve. Before that, we played against Finland, where I also placed. This was my first match as part of the national team, and we will see. I have the will to train, and hopefully I will be successful further. So, Yurai gave you some experience, some know-how, and perhaps and we'll be able to move that uh, further to other people later as a motivator. You know, I, well, if there will be an opportunity, I will do so. Yurai, the question which I asked a few times, what are the hardest moments of the work of a motivator? Well, the best moments are when successes come, but what are the most complicated ones? Well, to make uh, the client happy. What I, ha I experienced is that the client is too, um, has a too close relationship. Perhaps they, uh, they call at eight or nine o'clock in the mo mo in the evening, try and they ask me to prepare something with them. Well, what do you do? Well, I don't pick up the calls at eight o'clock in the evening. I'm trying to help, but there have to be some boundaries. So some. People are very hard to work with if um, they stick to me too much as a motivator. 
they want me to prepare everything, to hand everything. Can you go with me? They keep asking, and this is hard for me to perhaps filter it a bit. And what are the most positive moments? Well, successes. Success of the client. If they come and thank you, that great, I'm thankful that I met you. I would never play ice hockey if I didn't, like Yanko, for example. So this is what's very positive for me. Wonderful. That was Juraj Folvarski. And I would like to say that we don't know who will, who will give the last presentation, but we can um, conclude that this will be Marek Machata with his client within this session. So please, the last presentation. Thank you. First, I told myself that this will be too complicated to talk about such wonderful colleagues and clients. But then I told myself, well, the client will always help you when it's necessary in this regard. So next to me is my client, Petya Novota. At the beginning, I would like to say a few things that we dealt with with Petya. Uh, Petya was in the stage of life that he was after he finished education and he, he had some um, vision about his job. The COVID unfortunately changed this. Um, uh, the COVID stopped him from getting a PhD, which was his plan before. So we were thinking that we will find some work and stop. But gradually, uh, Petio became perhaps a future motivator. So we had three areas. One of them was Petio's education and personal growth. There, Petio um, went through several group activities uh, that we have within the project. I know we, sh we shouldn't call them educational activities, but group activities. Petio is, uh, has the education of a psychologist, and I knew it would be good for him to go through a coaching course. I approached a company uh, which educates coaches, and I knew that uh, they sometimes um, accept someone who doesn't have to pay the full price. I told them about Petio, and they were happy to accept him. Then what was important was his independent uh, travel to Piesciani by train. Um, so first of all, we had to find out everything about the train, and Petio then was successful in in. So first of all, we had to find out everything about the train, and Petio then was successful in in traveling by himself. Perhaps Petio can say something. Well, in the railway. There was the the train, and the the employees of the railway help as well. Petya was so happy that he forgot to take photos. So unfortunately, we don't have any photographs from that. Then, in terms of work and professional development, uh, Petya started to review the news um, in terms of wheelchair products on Vozichka.info. He, do, he did some pioneering reviews. He was one of the first with new wheelchairs that he could review. Then you will see a few photographs. Petio wanted to continue uh, developing. He started. He became part of the Slovak Association of Sports Psychology. And I mentioned the coaching company. I mentioned uh, Petio's wish to work. And after the coaching course, Petio started to work with them on their completely new project, and he basically became basically a head of the project. Petio perhaps tried to say something about it. I'm helping to ensure the creation of the website, which will be for their new project. Well, and the employment was also sorted out perhaps in a bit more creative way than we thought at the beginning. And in terms of the tools and compensations, well, there is a new mechanical wheelchair which Petio is sitting on today. He selected it himself. We uh, approached four foundations and four uh, made a contribution so Petio could quite fast afford a wheelchair within half a year, which he likes. And the last thing we dealt with was a repair of the electric 
uh, wheelchair and we have prepared uh, a request for the increase of the number of hours of personal assistance. He hasn't used, this, who's used it yet, but it is prepared. Well, it became a bit slower at, at the, in, in this time period. Well, here on the pictures you can see the meetings. There is a meeting at the Immobilia Civil Association where we are active together with Petio. These are uh, the pictures from the test of the electrical uh, wheelchair. Is this the Permobil? This was a completely new wheelchair. The company basically got it three days before I got it to test it for a few days. So I had this opportunity. So this was a completely new pro product in Slovakia. In this slide, if you allow, I would like to comment on it. The photograph where we are together, that is where we are uh, watching the conference of the Slovak Association of Sports Psychology. Perhaps you sa see a smaller person on the screen. That's our methodician, Petja Kuračka, who had the uh, who had lectured the conference, and the second picture is from the coaching course. Petio asked me if I could uh, work as his client there, so the so um, we came the full circle and the client started coaching the motivator. So Petio is completely ready if the project would be extended, if we would be looking for some new motivators, he would be ready to apply for that position. I would like to add that this was a part of an exam uh, that was necessary for to to finish the the, the testing and the course. So that is our shared story, a story of the client and motivator. To conclude, I would like to say that for me it was wonderful to see how Petro in the few months or more than a year in the project really managed to grow. We approached him in some kind of a life situation. He needed to move forward and he moved somewhere where I wouldn't even expect it. This is not, uh, I'm not saying that because I would underestimate him, but I didn't expect the cooperation to develop in this way. Petio was that client who would write me at 10 o'clock on Sunday. He would write me, let's try this, let's try that, let's do it, we will do it. But this is wonderful for the, for the motivator if the client himself is motivated and wants, wants to reach the goals because at the beginning you weren't in a very good situation were you this was a time period when we tried to uh, started to cooperate and that was uh, quite a hard period of time for me also because of the pandemic perhaps and the other things too but it helped me start perhaps it showed me that I don't have to be just at home, closed at home, isolated at home, that we can do something, uh, come up with some activities. We have known each other with Marek for a very long time and when we started to cooperate, or before that, I wouldn't even think that we can be some kind of a motivation for each other. So thank you very much. Thank you, I have nothing to add. Uh, who's motivating motivators besides clients? Who is motivating motivators not to burn out? Is that a question for the motivator? Yes. Colleagues and method methodologists. We are in everyday contact with these colleagues either through phones or chat groups and then the methodologists, um, they are always there when we don't know how to continue, when we need some help to restart. Um, so they are there for us and they are important for us. We have mentioned them already today, but I think that in the project they play a much more important role that we often like to say, so th th I think a thanks goes to them as well. Okay, so the normal question I ask for everyone, what is the biggest barrier in, in the work? For me personally, I am from Bratislava. Several of us are in Bratislava. So to find new clients in the field outside of Bratislava. This is, I think, the most difficult part. We have to travel, we have to look for new clients, 
Tomáš prezentoval to dnes. To nemusí být v pohledu, můžete to dělat od Google, nebo vzít od Google. A myslím, že když jsem žil v jiném different district city or regional city, it would be easier, maybe. So uh, I need to find, or if I have clients outside of Bratislava, I have to visit and uh, him and um, work also um, outside of Bratislava. What else? What is your next goal, let's say? What would you like to achieve? well to achieve to be as a motivator to or in a different role to participate in the continuation of this project we started with parallela now we are in the project we are equal and i let's hope that we will continue working with the slovak paralympic committee in the future either continuing with this project or on new calls i am looking at uh, jan riapos and uh, I know that there are several calls, so I, I hope that we will be successfully in our cooperation. That was Marek Machata. A big applause, a round of, of applause to all of the participants of this really nice panel. And uh, thank you to all motivators and clients. Thank you for coming and talking to us and speaking of your strong stories.